Well, hello, hello, uh, YouTube world. It's Sunday, February 24th, 2019, not 2014. Uh, and yes, I am uh, coming at you from my, <laughs> from my home and uh, going to just talk to you about some things that are on my mind and just kind of share the direction we're going to be going with this page as it starts to develop and evolve. So, of course, today was Sunday. I had a wonderful worship at my church, Oak Ridge Baptist Church. Shout out to uh, Pastor Andrew Beto. And we had a really good worship. It was over the book of James, verses chapter 2, verses 14 through uh, 26, 26. And that was a very convicting sermon just in terms of talking about what is works versus faith, of course, James covers this throughout his the book, or his letter, and it was uh, just, just very insightful about what our pastor was talking on, and just reminding us how very much, uh, if you are going to be working, if you have a working faith, you will have a faith that works, and it will be producing a good works, and going out and doing that which Jesus Christ calls us to do as all, all believers. And this was something that I, of course, thought on throughout the day. Uh, we had a wonderful, we had a uh, chili cook-off, and then I spent time with the kids, and we got home, and and uh, I was reading my Psalms. This is something now I'm trying to, to do every day. Uh, let, let me grab the book here. Uh, so, uh, this is a book by Marshall D. Johnson. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Johnson has since passed away. He passed away in 2011. But his writings were really good, Lutheran pastor, uh, but just sound, sound, uh, you know, sound doctrine as much as Lutherans can get. Uh, well, I'll be talking to my Lutheran buddies, I'm sure, eventually here. But yes, this is a very good book. I would definitely recommend it. It's a good way to go through the Psalms. I want to get more of the books, of course. I want. I don't have Treasury of David by Charles Spurgeon, but I definitely want that. But I do have this, which is. I read that, and of course, then I read this. And so I do have Spurgeon, Calvin, and uh, Matthew Henry. And this is a great, great uh, way to supplement with this good commentary, kind of as you're reading along the Psalms. As I'm reading these commentaries, I kind of pick along. Now, they don't have, the, of course, the full, all the full writings. For example, Spurgeon wrote seven books. Now it's kind of condensed into three, but it's the full works of the Psalms. Uh, commentaries, but um, I have I have the complete works of Matthew Henry, and there's no way I can have all the works of Calvin yet. Calvin wrote a ridiculous amount of books, but we will eventually get there, especially as I move in my journey of, towards seminary and, and things of that nature, which are things I want to cover. And that was kind of one of the things, uh, before I kind of get to the main topic today, which I will cover here, which goes back to what was preached on today, but I was thinking one of the things that I'd like to do with this uh, vlog course is also just kind of cover my own journey as I hopefully get into a PhD program. I want to clarify that I'm not in a PhD program yet. I'm actually being, I was asked to put in for a fellowship, so I'm, I've been doing that process. I put in for the, the doctorate. Now I'm actually putting in, I've been writing out my letter now for the fellowship. That's the second part. Um, and then I should know sometime next month. Not quite clear yet, but uh, I'm excited about it. I think I will get into this program, and if I get into the fellowship, that will be really unique. But we'll we'll see how that all how that all works out. But I like just to kind of cover that journey, and from of course from a Christian perspective, especially as I go into you know still within secular realm of universities and how I, and that dynamic, and then of course transitioning to seminary, which is a lot of education, a lot of time, but much time needed, especially in my calling for the Lord, and this is something that I would like to share and kind of experiences and where we're going, what not just on my personal level, but how I can help those who are going through the same route. I know there's a lot of videos, a lot of stuff out there that covers this, but I think it's very important to. Um, I think there's there there are things that are missing out there. I try to watch a lot of these videos because I you know I think about doctorates. I uh, mentioned before, I'm in education, right? I think about these things, and so uh, I think I can also give a really good, unique perspective as well into this, into that YouTube world, and uh, 
we'll, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what, what all develops there. But um, So yes, uh, what I really want to talk about, though, is uh, doing a good work. And I think very often, and this is something I was kind of convicted about today, I took a little nap. I was going to do this earlier, this video. Uh, things just kind of got in the way, I, uh, but and it wasn't going to be perfect. And then and this is even perfect now, but this is kind of what I want to talk about is so often in our lives, whether you're a Christian or not, you, uh, we, we, want to, we, we have goals. We want to do these certain, you know, we want to do certain things. Of course, but if you're, if you're obeying Christ, if you're obeying God, uh, we're supposed to do the things that he has called us to do. But so often we make the excuse that we want it to be perfect, right? We want it to be exactly how we think it should be. But often God does not work in that way. He calls us to be obedient no matter what and no matter how it may end up, including it could end up uh, you know, dying. We know this historically. Uh, Christians have been martyrs again and again and again. And, um, but it, you know, the perfect work that Christ is working in us is... Christ working in us is not has nothing to do with our personal feelings or how we you know we think it should be it has no effect and so often we're afraid to work and to do what God has called us to do as we are waiting on him because we're afraid to do it because it doesn't look just right and but we have to do the risk because we're called to do the risk we're, you know there there's a great book that John Piper has I don't they, I don't think you can directly Behind me, are they? It is. Hold on. Oh, no, I can't reach it. Uh, it's called taking a risk, and and that we need to be willing to take the risk. And so this is important, and it's something that I definitely want to cover more, as I, I myself have not taken all the risks that I need to. Although I think slowly but surely, uh, you know, I'm really reaching that point. But um, I have my Bible here. I wasn't really sure if I'm reading scripture particularly, but um, I do like verse 14 where it says, and this is just using the New King James Version, and my wife is just getting up from behind with her. Uh, oh, she's trying to help. Uh, yes, this is the book, uh, Risk is Right. That's a really cool book. I could have, thank you, honey. I could have grabbed that. <laughs> but it's good, it's good. Uh, I, this is something that I need to remind myself. And anything of John Piper's, I highly recommend. I don't care if you're Presbyterian, if you're Lutheran, if you're Baptist, as you see, uh, definitely need to read this. And if you're not Christian, uh, this is something that I would like to also have a, eventually kind of look into. Uh, how much are we, as Christians, how much are we dialoguing, especially if men of like Piper, how much are they dialoguing with the great intellects in this way? But I also just encourage you just to see what we're talking about. We're, we're really all in... This big conversation is taking place in, in, our, in our world today, like identity politics, or, um, you know, we're concerned as much about education as anybody else, right? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of familiarity, and I think we need to have this dialogue, especially in a world where we're so divided, and we have so much uh, coming, uh, you know, how much we want to fight with one another. But, um, yeah, I was uh, verse 14 uh, from James 2, uh, verse 14 says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not uh, does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one you say to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? And that's verse 14 and on to 16. But just a good solid word about how really and how often... We are afraid, either we're afraid to do a good work, or maybe we're not saved. And that was kind of what the sermon was, was also covering, is if, if you're willing to let the person, in this case, you know, in, the, in this example that's given, of letting that person still be destitute, destitute, not just in the soul, which is a big part of what we're called to do in our works, is to testify to Jesus Christ, that he died and rose again, and we're to repent of our sins, to accept Him as Lord, but we're also to help the hungry, to help the poor, right? We're to also serve others in a variety of capacities, and it's in in the it's easy because the world does do a lot of service, but it doesn't mean they're saved, and it is also doesn't mean that Christians are saved either. 
uh, that, that just do good works, right? And so that's the, the or fa it is by faith and by faith alone, uh, through, the, uh, through grace, but if you have true faith, you're to do a good work. And that was kind of what was convicting of me, which is, I'm called to do a good work, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's the key that I want you to take away from there. Uh, lastly, what was I going to grab? So a few things. Um, definitely thanking my wife for these. The ESV. Going through the Psalms of the journals. Which is awesome. Definitely going to be writing these. Definitely recommend them. ESV does a great, great job in building these. Oh, it has this here. Going through this. Kind of goes right along with what I was talking about. You can't go wrong with reading Diedrich Bonhoeffer's book here on the, um, the cost of discipleship. Highly, highly recommend. And that kind of actually brings me to my next final point, which is I definitely am going to start covering books and not just reviews. I don't just do reviews. I mean, we're going to actually go through them, teach them in depthly, uh, in depth, and, and really trying to to, to work out what is you know, Bonhoeffer or others are trying to say. I definitely want to start doing the Bible. Uh, maybe just a little mini-series, uh, bit by bit, book by book. Um, you know, I, there's some things I want to work out on terms of, you know, that I'm not, I'm not uh, making any mistakes in copyright or in pictures or anything in that, but I definitely want to, I don't want to just do it face-to-face. -face. I want to be able to also... Uh, put up like a PowerPoint and kind of follow along and so you can really take notes and, and all those that, 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 those things of that nature. And then lastly, I also do secular works, including everybody, everybody's favorite, uh, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. And I have, oh, this thing's a tomb, but it's well worth to read. And I definitely have taken so many notes on this and... Uh, this is something that I will be covering. Really, really trying to uh, talk about not only what he's saying here, but then translating it to today and how relevant that is and why you should read this book and other books that I will eventually cover. But definitely um, exciting, ex <laughs> exciting things for my lovers of books, but... Um, Anyone who's seeking to learn, to grow, and to experience, and just also have a lot of dialogue. Uh, I try to be very interdisciplinary, meaning that I just I pull out economics and philosophy, and of course religion, as you will see. But uh, I definitely want to tie these things together, and that's what I do. And uh, I definitely want to start teaching. Uh, it's one of the things that I think I'm going to be using this page for. Just kind of figuring that all out, uh, how the, you know, within a good time frame, and how to set those all up. Those will be coming, but for now, you know, we'll be kind of just slowly but surely doing this. I thank you for watching. Uh, you know, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, kind of the classic things that everybody tells you on YouTube. Uh, I definitely will share more about myself over time, and just kind of you know where I'm coming from. And and uh, there's so many people on YouTube. That was you know something else that came to mind uh, that they. Everybody has an opinion, right? Everybody has something to say, but I really want to be not just, you know factual and really trying hard to, to get into the depths of ideas and where you know why do we believe what we believe and where is this coming from and and what are the different arguments and sides and there's so you know now everything's black and white and I definitely want to, to encourage that this is going to be some hard learning it's going to be uh, really seeking truth. All things Veritas, right? And so that's what this is about. Um, I'm always seeking the truth, trying to be the best we can be in an objective manner and a sincere manner as well, and open. I want to be open. I want to be transparent. I, you know, I'm I am not a pastor, but I'm going to that direction. And then, and by the way, technically, you don't need a seminary degree to be a pastor. I just believe that I need to go to seminary because I want to get really solid and even further solid. And I feel like I am, you know, but it's good to be around men who, 
who, who know the Word and teach the Word in depthly and the history of the church and all those cool, great dynamics. And, of course, I'll talk about my faith more as I'm, you know, and sharing those different things in the videos to come. But I thank you for watching. Appreciate all the, uh, the, friend, the few of my friends that are already there, I know. Uh, uh, you know, shout out to Grant. Grant shout out to, uh, to Zaid and to uh, Christina and anyone else who may be watching. And to my wife, uh, who's lovely and great. And thank you all. God bless. And I will be in touch soon on uh, the YouTube world. Peace.